Hi! Um, hi, hello. <laughs> I'm Julia and today I'm doing my January, Febu February, March um, 2020 wrap up. Um, unlike other booktubers, I haven't read that much, but my, my yearly goal is 40 books. Don't know why this is 40 in my world. Um, yeah, so 40 books and I'm only one book behind on Goodreads, which is, which for me is quite good. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just start with all the books I read. Um, I've like, for me, I, I've been reading quite a lot. Um, got into it a lot. I think this channel helps because you know, you can actually talk about them with people and people might answer, might not answer. It might just be speaking into the void, but that's okay, I still love you. Ooh, okay, I started this year off with Good Times in the Fantasy World. I read, can't find it. I just realized my pajamas are in frame. Okay, the first book I read was His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. And it was great. Um, this is really, really well known. This is um, like on a scale of like Narnia, Harry Potter level of known. Um, it's a fantasy series. I think there's three books. Um, it's the Northern Light series. And uh, no, it's the His Dark Material series. And this book is called Northern Lights. <laughs> Got it. Um, it's in this fantasy world where humans have kind of, um, yeah, have these kind of animal companions who are also tied to their soul and they're called demons. And this book is about Lyra, a young girl who grew up in Oxford, um, who has uh, her demon <laughs> and um, who, who basically they more and more in their town or around the, in their area, children are going missing. And Lyra gets kind of caught up in the adventure. She, um, yeah, she lives in a college in Oxford and has uh, been brought up by professors. So she doesn't have parents. And then when one of the servant boys and her best friend goes missing, she's like, right, that's it. Um, gotta save him. And then it's just this whole magical thing with Antarctica and there's polar bears and there's witches and there's a guy in a balloon. <laughs> it's really good. And I'm definitely gonna read the rest. It's kind of the perfect escapism fantasy world storyline um yeah i gave it five out of five stars would recommend very good fun it was like it was during the christmas holidays where you're like i just want to live in a fantasy world and sleep and eat and read very fun the next book i read mainly on my commute to work was my Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moschweg. Otessa Moschweg. <laughs> I feel like every time I read an author's name, I repeat it because I'm insecure and I don't want to offend anyone, but I just don't know how to say, say the names. Um, my Year of Rest and Relaxation is about um, a young woman. She lives in Manhattan. She's a, gr a graduate from a very prestigious university whose parents passed away, who still has a lot of money to survive and who decides to just take a year out, take a lot of drugs and just sleep. <laughs> um, yeah, she basically decides she doesn't want to um, participate in the real world anymore. And she just is going to sleep her life away. She does this because, um, no, because she can. <laughs> no, she does this by, um, she has a therapist, a psychotherapist who prescribes her all sorts of like sleeping pills and antidepressants and anti-anxiety meds. And she just abuses them basically and just sleeps her life away. And you just follow her year of rest and relaxation where she forgets, uh, yeah, um, tries to get out of this world by sleeping. Um, yeah, it's set in 2000s, which was really interesting. And it kind of, it always, it's like set in months. So, you know, it's um, like January 2000, February 2000, and then it goes into 2001. And so, you know that 9-11 is coming up and she lives in New York. So you're always like, how's she gonna, 
how's the story gonna intertwine this um, this horrible event with the story? And it's really interesting. Um, it's very funny as well. It's very dry, and even though the whole story is kind of horrific um, and horrible and weird, and you don't really like her, she has a best friend who you feel sorry for, but you also kind of hate. So you don't like anyone, um, but it's it's just funny and re relatable, and I really recommend it. I gave it four stars. Um, I loved it, but I only give um, books five stars when they like make a huge impact on me and blow me away, I guess. I might have changed positions because I was suddenly terrified that I wasn't in focus and... Am I in focus? Dear God, <laughs> stressful times. I know I can do manual focus, but you know, we got time for that. She says, recording a video out of focus and then being sad about it afterwards. Anyway, the third book I read this year was The Truth About Keeping Secrets by Savannah Brown. I know Savannah Brown from YouTube. Um, she's this really cool, like, artsy, quirky, also kind of dark, but also not woman. <laughs> um, and she's, she writes poetry and she makes these really kind of angsty book but also life affirming YouTube videos and she's, uh, she's just she's just really cool. She's um she's who I wanna be when I grow up. I think she's younger than me but she's still who I wanna be. And this is her novel. I think this is her first fiction novel. Um she wrote some poetry books as well, but this is her first work of fiction. I think I might have to look that up. Yes, and it's about um a teenager called Sydney whose father dies in a car crash. And um, Sydney believes that the car crash wasn't an accident. Her father's a therapist, so she kind of thinks that one of the patients might have caused the accident. And there, the story goes from there. It's set at the funeral, and one of she finds out that one of the popular, gorgeous girls in her school, called June, um, was seeing her father as a patient. And now June's life and Sydney's life kind of get together, they meet, they start to become friends, then it blossoms into more and um, Sydney's kind of hopelessly in love with June and doesn't know how June's feeling but June's lovely as well and but it's, so it has this kind of relationship -y kind of teen drama aspect but it also has the kind of murder mystery aspect of um, Sydney's father and what happened to him and it's um, set in a small town, it has this kind of spooky atmosphere and um, I really enjoyed it I thought it was an easy read. I thought it was, um, I can flew through it, but I didn't love it as much I hoped that I would. Um, I thought her writing was really stunning. Um, I don't have any examples now because I didn't write any out, but I just remember thinking that the way she wrote was so visual, like she had um, kind of emotions were described in kind of very pic like visual ways, like, um, can't think of any examples, but if you read it, you'll notice, I hope. Um, yeah, and I I thought it was really, really good. Um, I gave it three stars, which meant I enjoyed it, but I didn't absolutely love it. I feel like I'm always justifying my star ratings. It's just a feeling, you know, a feeling. But I think if I were younger, I would have loved this book. So if it was like, I don't know, 16 to 20 or something, well, that's stupid because... Um, anyone can enjoy any book, but for some reason I feel like if I were a younger Yulia would have loved this. Right. The next book I listened to was an audiobook my mother recommended. It's called My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. And this is about um, a couple, uh, a married couple, and they have three kids. They have two kids. Yeah, I think they have two kids. Married couple, they have two kids, and um, they're like kind of uh, well off, not very rich, but kind of holding their heads above water in the kind of good part of town. Um, yeah, and they have this secret. Um, it's kind of a fetish they have where the two of them seek out women and then murder them. <laughs> and <laughs> and the story kind of follows their process, how they got to the point where they decided, realized that's something they're both into, um, how they um, find their victims, what they do next. And it's from the point of view of the husband 
and it's basically called my beautiful wife because he doesn't know everything his wife is doing because she basic she captures them and murders them and he just knows about it and is into it questionable i know but it was um yeah it's really really twisted and freaking dark and freaky and weird but it's really really interesting and it's, it's such a different perspective because you're like I've never I've never read about a couple that likes to murder people, and you see it from the murderer's perspective. It, and it's really really interesting, um, really exciting. But I gave it three stars because I was like totally into it. I guess because I couldn't identify myself with the the couple. Like, but I think you shouldn't. Um, yeah, it was a bit too fucked up for me. I guess. <laughs> Um, but it was fun. That's why I gave it three stars. I um, but I didn't. I didn't feel like excited that I had to know what was going to happen because I guess we already knew who the killers were. The next book I read was Find Me by Andrei Asiman. Um, yeah, I made a whole video about it. I'll link it below if I know how that works. I think I do. I'm not. I'm still young. Um, yeah, I made a whole video about it. Um, Three stars. I loved it, but I also had many opinions. The next book I read, ooh, it's a good one, is My Sister the Serial Killer by Oinkan Braithwaite. I hope I said that right. Um, and, ooh, this is really good. This is so different to anything I've read before. Okay, My Sister the Serial Killer is about two sisters who live in Nigeria, um, Kareed and Ayola. Kareed is the eldest sister, very sensible. She's a nurse. She's always looks after her little sister. And the little sister, Ayola, is very, very stunning. She's beautiful, kind of childish, and always gets her way. And um, the special thing about the two of them is that Ayola always kills her boyfriends. <laughs> she says it's not on purpose, but um, we all kind of know it can't always be an accident if it keeps happening. And yeah, every time Ayola kills one of her boyfriends, she rings Kareed to help her. And Kareed always does because that's the kind of relationship they have. No matter what happens, they're still, there's a sisterly bond. And the story begins, uh, or the story kind of starts uh, unraveling when um, Ayola and a doctor at Kareed's hospital um, get together. And Kareed is madly in love with him and but now knows that he's gonna die in some way or another because he's seeing Ayola. Um, it's so cool this book, it's so um, interesting in such a, a different world to my very Western European world. Um, it, the, the relationship between Ayola and Kareed is so complicated and complex, same thing complicated and complex. But also so beautiful because you know they're always gonna be there for each other. They they respect each other, and you're like Kareed, why do you always help her? But for some reason you get it, and I oof, I thought it was beautiful. I loved it. Um, five out of five stars. Definitely read it. <laughs> and the last book I read in March, I started in August last year, and it is City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. Funny, dark, and sexy. Um, yeah, this book, I know everyone on booktube knows it. I had just never read it. I think the cover's hilarious. I don't know why. Um, well, I do know why. That's funny. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's from the Mortal Instruments series, which was like a huge bestseller. There were there's a movie on it, there's a show on it, and there's like so many books in this world that have like spin-off stories. Yeah, but... Um, that was fun for me, a very fun read. <laughs> but I think, I think I was either too old for it, which I don't want to believe, or it was just, it's just been so long. Like it just came out so long ago that the kind of way it's written is so old. Like it's not very modern to me. Like the story's not very modern to me. Um, it's very, it's on one hand, well, I'll tell you what it's about. It's about this 15-year-old um, girl called Clary who lives in New York um, who realizes, who comes into this fantasy world um, where 
Um, she comes into this fantasy world through shadow hunters who are like these people who fight demons in the underworld. I don't actually quite understand the whole world. I think I... I think I didn't do my best when I read this book. It was just like light entertainment. Um, but I struggled with a few things. Um, I struggled with the way Clary was portrayed. She was like... She wasn't like a damsel in distress, but she kind of... It was always like she was not like other girls, I guess. She was just... There was such a focus on how beautiful she was and she's so petite and other girls want to be like her, but she doesn't notice because she's different. Um, she never noticed how beautiful her eyes were. She never noticed no, noticed her the way she, um, the way she, boys react around her. Then there was only two other women in the story. One was her mother who got kidnapped at the beginning, so she was gone, and the other woman was one of the shadow hunters called Isabel, and she was just this bitchy, horrible girl who had no qualities except being sassy and rude, and stunning, of course, but. The kind of stunning where they're like, it's not like Clary. <laughs> okay, apparently I have a lot of issues with this book. <laughs> yeah, it just, um, it was kind of tropey in my opinion. And the the main guy, Jace, she falls in love with. Um, he's just like this typical bad boy with a soft side and kind of drove me insane. She has this best friend called Simon and he's just like this, you know, the best friend character who's in love with her and she hasn't noticed, but they've known each other for years. Uh, yeah, it was just a bit much and um, spoiler, spoiler alert here. They're siblings. <laughs> oh God, that alone made me not want to read the rest. It's just so fucked up. I don't know. Ooh, ooh. There's, oh yeah, there's siblings. The, uh, the, the two lovers in the book find out their siblings at the end. Um, which made me not want to read the rest. I, yeah. I think if I were. 14, 15, 16, I don't know. I definitely would have read it differently and maybe I would have loved it, but I don't know. I couldn't, I, I just couldn't enjoy it very much. I think I gave it two stars. Yeah, two stars. <laughs> um, yeah, it wasn't my, it wasn't my jam, but I, I understand if you like it as a different person because um, it is very like, it's very fun. It's very, exciting it builds up this whole fantasy world and i do love it when there's like the normal world and then in secret there's a magical world hidden from normal people like us but the main character finds her way into it um i do like that trope and i i do get why it's fun I, it just wasn't for me i guess the last book i read i only finished yesterday i read it in two days and um, was shop objects by Gillian flynn um, I love that book. It is fucked up and creepy and scary and weird, but it's also so cool. It's about this young journalist who has to go back to her hometown, which is like the small southern home, uh, town called Wind Gap. And she lives in Chicago and she has to go back to her hometown because two murders happened there. So two young girls were killed. In a, in a horrible way and she has to be the journalist on the scene to find out what happened um but the problem is she has to move in back in with her family so her mother her stepdad and her half sister she never met and boy oh boy that family is scary as fuck <laughs> they are insane they're so abusive and the little her half sister is like in the family, she's like this little baby girl who, I think she's, th yeah, she's 13, who, um, uh, who's like babyish and has like tantrums if her dollhouse isn't perfect. But outside of the house, she's like this, um, she acts like she's like 21. She wears like tube tops and takes all kinds of drugs. <laughs> Typical 21 year olds with their tube tops. Um, wears like tiny skirts and is very like has sex with all these guys and I don't know it's it's just wild anyway um yeah it's basically about how oh she's called Camille Camille the main woman her kind of living in this house uncovering the story behind the murders but also seeing how her story is linked to the murders and her role in this town and kind of falling back into old patterns of the way she was when she lived there um, yeah, and it's the whole the whole atmosphere in the town is just so creepy. Um, it's it's um, 
everyone you don't trust anyone in the town and the way it's described you can just feel the whole atmosphere and the creepiness of it all um, and the ending is so exciting oh my god uh, you kind of do suspect some of it but it's also I didn't expect the one part of the ending yeah so I definitely recommend that five out of five stars I know there's a HBO series on it with Amy Adams and I really want to see it but I live in Germany and we don't have HBO oh <laughs> sad times okay yeah so these were my books that i read this in uh january february march i know it's not a lot for, for other people to me it's a, ooh, quite a lot <laughs> um eight books all in all ah, fuck <laughs> sorry um eight books all in all and good reading months and now with the current situation in the world I guess we'll be reading a bit more. Am I in focus? No. Um, yes. If you've read these books, please tell me your opinions. These are, of course, just my opinions. Um, have you read these books? Do you have any good book recommendations? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still reading two books now. It's the 28th of March and I have two books on the go. So maybe I'll finish them, but I'll put them in the next wrap up. Um, yes, thank you so much for watching. Um, hmm. See you soon. Goodbye.